A very warm welcome to everybody. We continue our uh, uh, initial conversations with guests for the Celebrating Descent um, festival we're organizing here today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. And today we're having a series of uh, uh, conversations with um, uh, some of the guests of, uh, the con of the festival tomorrow. And right now we, I'm very honored to welcome Taslima Nasrin here on uh, this table in this conversation. We're very honored that you're here, that you took the the, the pain of traveling over here and that you participate in this conference. So a very warm welcome to you. <laughs> My name is Juri Albert, I'm director of the Bali and I'm delighted that we have an hour of conversation on uh, uh, many topics, but on uh, topics of um, emancipation, on um, activism, on literature. Um, if um, um, just to, to, to point out a little bit uh, about our guest, uh, Taslima Nasrin is uh, Bangladeshi born. Maybe now you should say hyphenated Bangladeshi Swedish writer. Um, we have these hyphenated identities uh, uh, nowadays. Writer, poet, physician, feminist, secular humanist, human rights activist, um, known for her writing on women's oppression and criticism of religion. And in the face of these, of, uh, of forced exile and multiple fatwas, she's um, still uh, uh, very productive. Fatwas calling for her death. Um, Nazreen's works have been translated in 30 languages, if I'm not mistaken. Some of her books are, are banned in Bangladesh, uh, her place of birth. She was backlisted and banished from uh, the Bengal region, also from Bangladesh and from West Bengal, part of India. Um, you studied uh, medicine and became a physician, gained global attention by, uh, in the beginning of the 90s, owing, owing to your essays and novel, novels, feminist views and criticism of what um, uh, you ca characterize as misogynistic religions, including Islam and other religions. Um, you've been living in exile from 1994 onwards. Um, after living for more than a decade in Europe uh, and the United States, you moved back to India, um, to the Bengal region, uh, next to, to Bangladesh. Um, you've been uh, denied a permit, a permanent residence there as well. Um, 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 so it's, um, it's a continuing story of not being able to connect with your audience, the language you write, the language you write in. You advocate freedom of thought throughout your work, human rights, um, uh, by publishing, lecturing, campaigning. You're an honorary mem member of the National Secular Society. And um, um, this conversation, is, like I said, is part of the Celebrating Dissent um, uh, Festival. Um, again, it's wonderful that you're here. Just an initial question. Am I talking to an artist, a novelist, or to an activist? feminist who has views on the world, on how the world should be. I think I am a writer as well as a human rights defender mm -hmm. and secular humanist, so. Both. Yeah. That's a good answer, of course, but, but if you had to choose, how do you, how do you consider yourself? Mm, I Maybe consider myself way, as an honest human being. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that what I am doing, everything is because I uh, cannot uh, accept any inequalities and injustices against any human being. Mm -hmm. So in my country and also in many parts of this world. And my country, you would call Bangladesh your country? Where I was born and mm -hmm. raised. Okay, no, that's just to, it's a, to be uh, part of the world. And um, I have seen women are oppressed, so I talk about women, also uh, the um, religious minorities are oppressed and tortured, and so I wrote books uh, on them. Um, it's not that I only write about women. Whenever no. I see that people who are oppressed, you know, because of religion and also culture and customs and traditions, mm -hmm. you know, most of the time we see that women are uh, oppressed because of religion, culture, customs and traditions. And also 
You know, human beings, whenever they are oppressed, like Christians are oppressed, and Hindus are oppressed in Pakistan, and Hindus are oppressed in Bangladesh, and uh, also in Myanmar, Muslims are oppressed. So I, I, I defend them. And from your long experience of writing about it, more than 30 years and, and being an activist, what is more effective in your view? Writing as a novelist <laughs> or, being, um, or being active in media and, and as an activist on the streets? Yeah, I think everything. I, I have written some novels, some, mm -hmm. um, many poetry books many. and also essays. Yeah. So um, I have uh, found that many people became feminist and atheist and uh, humanist uh, after reading my books. And also many people became uh, you know, aware of their rights and freedom after reading my columns in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very effective. Both? Both. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have written 45 books. Yes. Uh, poetry, essays, uh, short stories, novels. Uh, nowadays I write more essays for newspapers, but uh, all are effective. Many people like my poetry, and you know in poetry I talk about love, I talk about beauty, but those also are liked by people. But in essays I'm, I'm more, you know, I defend human rights and I talk about women's freedom and rights. But also in my novels, um, you know, mostly because, you know, in our uh, subcontinent or in South Asia, women um, are not the main characters in the male, male writers' novels mm -hmm. because they, the heroes are always men, male, and females are the, you know, whoever, you know, serves men very well, who, who uh, are beautiful and follows all the orders of husbands. They are considered very good women. But in my novels, those women are, you know, brave women who break the societal norms, are the, are the main characters. Yeah. And they are celebrated, but not many... Uh, novels are like this. No, especially not maybe in no. your literature. In Mostly the novels are written by m men mm -hmm. and some women writers also follow, you know, their rules. So main characters are male and they are doing brave things, but women are just <coughs> serving them. So in my novels, nov my novels are different. So I think that people, oh, there are women who are very brave, who uh, you know, break the traditions and also who protest against all the injustices. They are not considered good women in those novels. And um, you write that probably because it interests you, but also why is it important to have uh, female characters who uh, are breaking the traditional rule of being subservient or... Is, you think you think it's it's important? It's very important. And why would that be? Because those people, there are women who who break the shackles, mm -hmm. but they are not highlighted. You know, their fights are not highlighted. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage women to fight for their f f rights and freedom. Yeah. So I highlight all those women who who break the shackles. And yeah. it is important because it's a, we live in a very misogynistic, patriarchal society. And uh, everybody, all the organization, all the political parties, government, and, you know, mm, so, so follow those norms. And whoever breaks the norms, then they're considered bad women, like me. And, uh, you know, I was thrown out of my country 25 years ago. So yeah. I have been living in exile for 25 years, and I'm not allowed to go back to my country. What would happen if you would go back? Uh, how? <laughs> I want to go back, but mm -hmm. how will I go back? Mm -hmm. Because my, mm, my Bangladesh passport is not 
renewed by mm -hmm. the government. And, you know, I have been to many Bangladeshi embassies to renew my Bangladesh passport. And they don't renew my passport because the government ordered them not to renew my passport. And also in my Swedish passport, I wanted to get Bangladesh visa. So they don't issue me mm -hmm. any visa. So I cannot, I have to have a valid document to be yeah, there. To enter. But if, if something, if miracles happen, mm -hmm. suddenly if I get a chance to go back to my country, I think I will be killed right away. You think so? By the fanatics. You know, in 90, 93, 94, Yes. There were there were hundreds of thousands of people were on the streets demanding the street your death. Demanding yes. Yeah. So they are still uh, they are still against me and they still want me to uh, you know want to kill me. So in case you would be issued a passport or a permit to yeah. to get in, you were afraid you would be killed immediately. But by whom? By the fan of Islamic Islamic fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. You know, so many atheists, and you know, they, they were young atheists, and they were all my kind of, uh, they loved my writings, and they Your became, yeah. they were inspired by me. Mm -hmm. They became atheists, yes. and they were hacked to death in Bangladesh. You know, so many atheists were killed by fanatics, by yeah. terrorists. I'm aware of that, though. You hardly see anything of that in the Western press, but I'm aware of that. Um, <coughs> Let me ask you another question about that, because you write your work and you do your work to inspire people and to have a, a life which you think is important to, to lead. And then people who follow your lead are being hacked to death. Yeah. What does that, excuse the question, but what does that do to you? Because would you say that, um, do you feel responsible for them or no, do you no. feel, I mean, how, how does that work for, I mean, how does that influence you? No, I was re really very sad, and I criticized the government for not protecting them. Yes, I've, I've you know, seen that. After, yeah. after uh, first man was hacked to death, and I asked, uh, you know, I can I cannot contact the government because no, you know. So, no. but in my writings, mm -hmm. I always I ask government to protect other atheists, other atheists, you know, uh, you know other atheist writers and also in the European Parliament and many platforms I used, you know, to so that the government can protect them or at least they can leave the country for mm -hmm. their safety. So some of them left the country, yeah. but some of them were killed. It must be very difficult for a writer not to be in contact with your audience and the language you write in. No, I, I, I write a regular column uh, in a Bangladesh very popular newspaper, so it is very good. They are courageous enough to allow me to write because mm -hmm. other other media is just avoiding me, and also the also the the the, the publishers they are afraid to publish my books, yeah. and also the uh, newspaper editors are afraid to publish my articles. So good that one, at least one um, newspaper published my articles. Not only that, the social media is very important. Facebook and Twitter, they always read me because of the social media. Yeah. And also, you ask me that if I go back, you know, I, am, I have been fighting for my right to, uh, right to go back to yeah. Bangladesh. You've but been denied your citizenship. It's right. because I, I believe in free freedom of movement. I will fight my right to go back to Bangladesh uh, until my death, but it doesn't mean that I will go back there and start living there. But I think that everybody should have the right to move uh, wherever they like to move, and everybody has the right to, to settle wherever they like to settle. So that I will fight for that. And also, I want Bangladesh to, um, to respect uh, you know, freedom of expression. Yeah. Because they, they, they uh, claim that they're democracy, but it's, the, it's a very important pillar of democracy is freedom of expression. The same is India. India doesn't allow freedom of expression in many cases. Uh, but it's called very proudly that it's a democracy. Yeah. 
They say so, it's the biggest democracy yeah. in the world. You know, they mean that voting thing is democracy, but it's not the only thing. No, rule of law is part of that. Of yeah, course. there's no. no equality between men and women. It's a very misogynistic society. And Muslim women have been suffering because they have, they've, they have to follow the Sharia law or, you know, they have... They, they are, the marriage, divorce, child custody, and inheritance are based on religion in, in India. And, in, you know, it's a very funny thing that um, it's, we call it, many people call it secular state, but, you know, uh, that Muslim women do not get equality in marriage, divorce, child custody, and inheritance. Whenever, whenever we fight for uniform civil code, of, you know, based on equality, mm -hmm. then we are, you know, blamed as the as the Hindu fanatics because Hindu fanatics want uniform civil code in India, and but we atheists and humanists, when we want Muslim women's human rights, then even the progressive people, the leftist progressive in India, do not like that. They want. Muslim people have their religious laws because by this way they support minority. Actually, it is against them because they believe in women's, uh, Hindu women's equal rights, mm -hmm. Christian women equal rights, but not Muslims, Muslim women's equal rights. It's very strange that minority, Muslim minority in India, uh, especially men, do not want uh, any uniform civil code based on equality. At the same time, you know, Hind Hindu people in Bangladesh, they want no uniform civil code. They want their old uh, religious laws which discriminates against women. A little bit you can see those things um, uh, in the progressive left in Sweden, where you uh, are more familiar with, in Holland, um, in Canada, um, in England. Um, there's talk of introducing Sharia courts uh, for, um, Hindu minor for Muslim minorities in London, in Canada. Uh, this is the same sort of um, yeah. um, progressives who are uh, thinking that they're doing that in order to um, protect minorities. That's what they say, at least. Yes, not is that uh, surprising to you? No, I have been seeing this, and this is very, I think it's a hypocrisy of li so-called liberal and leftists. They are not really... What's the hypocrisy? Hypocrisy, they said that they believe in human rights, mm -hmm. but they don't believe in Muslim women's human rights. Mm -hmm. They said that they are uh, uh, for minority, but you know, religion, if you... Okay, you, you fight against the oppression against Muslims, mm -hmm. But, you know, you cannot, you can, you know, you have to fight against also the fundamentalists in Muslim community. They think that fundamentalists coming from the majority community are dangerous, fundamentalists coming from minority community are not dangerous. They are equally dangerous. They are equally, uh, you know, against the society. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to fight against the fundamentalists of majority community as well as minority community. Yeah. But I can defend minorities. You know, I defend the minorities in India. Mm -hmm. Muslims are minority. Yes. I, I am for the Palestinian uh, Muslims who are, have been, you know, uh, of suppressed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And oppressed. also Gujarati Muslims who were killed by Hindu, uh, Hindu fanatics. fanatics. Yeah. I defend those Muslims. Yeah. But I don't defend their religion because religion is oppressive. Yeah. And I don't defend Muslim fanatics, even though they are from minority community, because they are they are dangerous. They are against human rights. They are against women's rights. They are against secularism. They are against democracy. Mm -hmm. Why should? But those leftist liberals, so-called secularists in India, mm -hmm. defend the defend Islam because it is minority people's religion, defend Muslim fanatics because it's a minority, minority community's uh, fanatics. But this is hypocrisy. Yeah. You said that you believe in human rights, but you don't believe in their human rights. No, 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 no. Um, you have been threatened by 
ten thousand of people on the streets demanding your death. Um, you have been in real, real great danger eh, in those times. Hyderabad. Uh, no, no, not ten thousand. It was hundred. Hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. uh, Four hundred thousand in one meeting. Four hundred thousand. Uh, yeah. Were ten thousand people who, who uh, took to the street with, uh, with this poisonous snakes. Yeah, they said they would release poisonous snakes. Yeah, if I to... if I don't get killed by the government. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't get, uh, you know. Uh, Execution by Executed hanging. Executed by the government, yeah. They would make sure that uh, thousands of snakes would get you, poisonous <laughs> snakes, yes. Um, and there were masses. I mean, um, uh, I wasn't aware of 400,000, but I mean, I've seen yeah. the, 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 the photographs of it. And the, mm. um, were you very afraid if there's a At mass? At that time, or? yeah. In, I was in hiding in Bangladesh mm -hmm. in 1994, June and July. Um, at one point, they declared that they would go every uh, every every house to to search for you. To search yeah. for me. Yeah. At that time, I was I actually I never thought at that time that I would be I would survive yes, because the uh, government filed against filed a case against me on the charges of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Police also are looking for me, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I didn't want to go into hiding, but my lawyer said that you have to. Yeah. Because when arrest warrant was issued, I said, okay, I will face it. The, my lawyer said, no, you have to go into hiding. I said, why? Police, if police arrest me, I will. Wrong, yeah. They said, no, police would kill you because it's a religious thing, you know, religious sentiment. And if, you, if they put you in a prison, the, any prisoner, fanatic prisoner would kill you. Because his religious sentiment is dangerous. Your lawyer so was I, a wise man. Yeah, I had yeah. to go into hiding for yeah. two months, and then, you know, I had to leave the how country. Did, how did you confront your own fear? What did you do? Um, no, I wrote. You wrote? I wrote. I wrote poems. Does it help? Mm, it did. I had no other alternative. Mm -hmm. I thought that... Uh, uh, that progressive people who were my friends, yeah. um, that writers and intellectuals would stand by me, but yeah. they were all silent. No, that's even worse. Uh, yeah, it? I yeah. was really scared that why were they silent? And then when the government said, and then all the embassies actually tried to save my life, and they talked with the government. And embassies the government, for foreign countries. Oh, yeah. the foreign yeah. countries. Yeah. Um, and uh, the government um, agreed to do... Actually, government wanted me to leave the country. So it would be so a solution it was, uh, for them. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so again, again um, 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 how did you manage to, to manage your fear? By writing or by... Or is it I, I did. I was, in a, I was in different houses. Mm -hmm. You know, at uh, midnight they put me, uh, you know, on the back seats of the of a car, yeah. and they put lots of uh, clothes, uh, clothes yeah. uh, on that over me, and then they drove from one place to another because it was not safe to stay in one place. You know, sometimes I was there, are many people in the house, but I was in their storage and nobody except one person knew that I was there. Sometimes I didn't get any food. If that person could get any chance to put food uh, in under the, uh, the door. Under the door yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I didn't, I was not allowed to take a shower. I didn't allow, I was not allowed to make any sound, nothing. I was like a dead body lying there, you know. Um, and it's because, because the things you write, because the things you believe. Yeah. yeah. And I, they, they moved from one place to another, and also I had to stay in those places like, uh, like a you know, dead one, in one room that nobody should know. And because if, if the fanatics knew that I was there, then they would kill also the hosts who gave me shelter. So it was very dangerous, and at one point, the people who were actually uh, helping me from uh, move, helping me move to, from one place to another, they didn't get any more shelter house because 
everybody was afraid to, to give me shelter because the country was paralyzed by the fanatics because they were campaigning and they were, you know, having general strike. Only they were putting, you know, because of me, they're putting pressure on the government to, to, to execute me by hanging. So the demand was so strong. So also my supporters were silent. So it was really very dangerous situation. Does it still affect you? That is a kind of nightmare, mm -hmm. you know. I still, imagine. when I yeah. think, when I, when I think of that, is mm -hmm. you know, I feel kind of, you know. I'm sorry to ask you about it, but no, I think no, it's but it's okay. To it's okay. Realize what. Yeah. What then I I wrote about those uh, yeah. what happened in my in my memoir. So yeah. I have written a few books of my memoir. So it is. So, for the, you know, description of two months, actually, it was a big book because it was so many, so many things happened that time. You faxed, um, I'm in grave danger. Fundamentalists are demanding my death. They have declared price money for my head again. Situation is dangerous now. They could kill me at any moment. Please save me. You faxed that text. Literally to Amnesty It was they actually, uh, the human rights and feminist organization outside Bangladesh actually asked me to write this kind of thing so that it would be diff uh, easier for them to, f to, to ask their government to save my life. And Amnesty did an action for you and uh, demanded you? I think there are many, many uh, organizations, not bang in Bangladesh, outside Bangladesh, there are many, many organizations, actually, writers' organizations. Yeah, Pan, and Pan International. They don't Pan know. International, yeah. and Salman Rushdie wrote an open letter. And there are many, not only Salman Rushdie, there are many writers, European writers, actually wrote open yes. letters. Yeah. Uh, and those actually helped. Yeah. But it didn't help to help me to go back to my country. Not only in Bangladesh, the same things happen in West Bengal, in India. In Hyderabad, West Bengal. In Hyderabad in 2004 again. Uh, in 19... 2007, they attacked Seven. me. Yeah. And then I actually, I, mo I left Europe in 2004. And I moved to uh, Calcutta uh, there. Because we, it's a Bengali environment, what it's, I wanted to. Yes, because I'm a Bengali Jesus. writer, so I wanted to live in Bengali environment. And Bengali language, I wanted to, you know, hear Bengali language, I wanted to speak Bengali language. But after three and a half years in that uh, city, in that West Bengal uh, it's a state, I was thrown out uh, of that West Bengal by West Bengal government. And it was a leftist communist government in the, you know, the West Bengal it's, state of India. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because they are kind of, uh, uh, they wanted to get Muslim votes. And they, th they th thought that because I am labeled as anti-Islam, so if I am thrown out of that state, they can tell their Muslim voters that their enemy is gone, so they can get Muslim votes. So this is uh, really very bad. So, and I am a Bengali writer, I have no place in Bengal. So I cannot go back to West Bengal, neither West Bengal nor East Bengal, which is called Bangladesh. It's very sad, I, so but, and then I moved to, uh, then I start, tried to live in um, Delhi, and it was not possible. I was actually put under house arrest in West Bengal first for Four, four months, and then I was taken to Delhi. There also I was, uh, I was uh, kept under house arrest for a few months, and then I found that I was really, uh, you know, I wanted to get, uh, to, I wanted to see a doctor because my, my blood pressure was very high. The government of India said, no, I shouldn't uh, be allowed to see any doctor. And then it was really very bad situation. And then um, the government, you know, brought, took me to some doctors and they gave me some medicine. After having this medicine, I was fainted and I was uh, taken to uh, 
hospital emergency and it was I was in ICU and it was I was really in bad condition. I was almost dying. Then they gave me lots of life saving steroids and it was the government decision because I was they asked me to leave the country and because I was not leaving they tried to harm me physically and then then uh, I had to leave to save my life. So even the democratic country, the largest democracy, can can decide to kill you if you do not listen to them. Yeah, or if it's. But uh, still, you can ask me why do I choose India to live? Yeah. It's a challenge for me. So they have to believe in freedom of expression. And you're moving, but. You, for you as a writer, I suppose it's important to be in contact with the language and the places where your books are yeah. read. Yeah, and also it is very important. Yeah. yeah, I could think that okay, I should save my life and live in, in Europe or America. I am also permanent resident of United States of America. Mm -hmm. I have green card. Yes, but 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 I don't live in America or Europe. You choose to live there. Be, mm, where I have all lots the, of problems. Of all the problems, yeah. Problems and f actually fatwas are, were issued in Bangladesh, but more fatwas are issued against me in India. Yes, yeah, in Bangladesh it was three fatwas, and in India it was five. By religious men. By religious fanatics, yeah. the the mufti and the imams, and those imams and muftis were very good friends of all political parties. Mm -hmm. And it's always men, of course, who. Oh, issue of course, fatwas. always men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Women uh, have no power, so they didn't start yet to issue fatwa. By the time they have power, they will. But they do, like Hasina in Bangladesh. Yeah. They, she has power. Yeah. Her fatwa is that not to allow the slima in the country. Yeah. So it's a kind of fatwa. Yeah. It's very. I think that they are the governments are more powerful than the mullahs. Mullahs have no power, but they can kill. They yeah. have. They have their. Uh, Fanatics. The yeah. the the the, uh, the <laughs> weapon. Yeah. There, uh, those those weapons are not very modern, but government's weapons are very modern weapons. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, turn a little bit to the West um, uh, out of your experiences, because, for instance, an organization like Amnesty asked, uh, pleaded for you when you were in danger there. But now here, recently, Amnesty made a big point out of defending the niqab. Mm -hmm. to be able to wear the niqab. How, how do you look upon that? Amnesty is always like that. It's nothing new. Uh, mm -hmm. Amnesty uh, doesn't say that they have to fight against uh, religion. No. They they try to respect religion. They even fight for the, the, the Islamists, if yeah. Islamists are in the, are, you know, in the, and the prisoners, yeah, you know. So how do, how do you look upon that? So I, I don't, I actually we shouldn't expect from amnesty any, uh, any great uh, revolutionary things. Amnesty mm -hmm. is just for, for helping people who are suffering. It's like a Christian missionary work. You know, the Christian missionaries, they help everyone. Yeah. Whoever, uh, you know, fanatics, killers, they don't care. No, they help everybody. You know, yeah. yeah, it's Amnesty International, it's like this. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, you know, there are other organizations. You know, when atheists in Bangladesh were hacked to death, mm -hmm. there are many organizations in the West who saved their life. Yeah. I think we should count them. Yeah. They're really great. And most of many organizations are actually atheist and secular organizations who help atheists, you know, who give shelter, uh, uh, you know, f to atheists. Yeah. They came out from, the, from that country and they're now living in, living in Germany, in England, in America, in Canada. There are many, many countries. And Amnesty International didn't help them. Yeah. Human Rights Watch, maybe, I don't know how much help they did, but mostly the atheist organization did. But, you know, the people who are in danger, they are atheists, or, you know, if not, if they are not atheists. And um, why Amnesty International and other organizations, human rights organizations, shouldn't help them? We see that when 
people are atheists, it's only that atheist organization extend their arm to help them. Not many other organizations are very interested in helping them. So they're more on their own than other minorities, you would say, in, in many mm -hmm. parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another example, just recent, um, we, uh, uh, today, um, you've been, um, uh, in many circumstances, being protected by uh, uh, bodyguards or police in order to, uh, to be able to move around. How do you look upon um, uh, Zinab El Razoui, who is not being able to travel through Europe? Yeah, it's very sad that she couldn't travel. You know, I met her I, I, after that attack of uh, Charlie Hebdo office. Mm -hmm. I visited that office very secretly. You know, the policemen came uh, and the bike and the took me to the office of Shirley mm -hmm. uh, It was really, they are really protected and it's a big iron gate in front of them. So I don't think the people nearby knew that it was Shirley Avdo's office. I met her and I met many people there. Mm -hmm. And um, I heard that she came before here. Yes, she did. So yeah. she could, she could have come. I don't think, you know, I have police security in India. I mm -hmm. didn't ask for security in, uh, in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So I know that, you know, it will be safe. So no, I, I will yeah. not, I will not go to Delhi without police security. I know that I need security there. Mm -hmm. But I know that I don't need security here. Because, uh, you know, people are not here, that not many people know about me here. Yeah. If I am here, you know, they will not notice and they will not come to kill me. No. But, you know, I cannot say that nobody, uh, the assassin is not waiting there about Zainab. I, about me, I can, I just feel that I would be safe. Maybe she doesn't feel safe. So I cannot uh, say on behalf of her that she will be safe. No. If she comes, maybe she will be killed. Who knows? So I think that it is totally her uh, decision. But if she could come here, I would be really happy to talk to her. Yeah. It is happy to. Because whenever I think of what happened to Charlie Abdul, really it's a nightmare. So I cannot just imagine. Uh, it's really, really bad. But hope that one day um, people would be free. I like to see this beautiful world no, where nobody will be oppressed and nobody will be threatened. And uh, if, we, if we fear this fundamental, how long would you be this afraid? And it's a life is not wonderful if we always are scared. But hope that um, Jainab will be will be able to move freely and um, um, you have been very outspoken in some of your essays and some of your, um, your books um, would you and you've been criticized by being so outspoken by being oh. so frank by being so um, um, by being so nasty or being so obnoxious. <laughs> huh? And um, by, for instance, stating that you uh, an atheist or by uh, the other uh, other other uh, uh, things you said, if you if you look at that sort of criticism, would you say that with hindsight you've been sometimes too harsh or too rash, or that your um, that your um, critics critics are maybe with hindsight now you have been writing for decades, were right, or that you were too outspoken or. No, I think that I have the right to write whatever I like to mm -hmm. write. And mm -hmm. uh, some, for some people it's good, and some people it's too much, you mm -hmm. know. So it's uh, different opinions. Sure. But, you know, if I write, if I criticize against other religions, it's okay. But mm -hmm. if whenever the problem starts when I'm um, critical of Islam, mm -hmm. so, you know, Islam should not be exempted from the critical scrutiny that applied to other religions. Mm -hmm. And I think that Islam should uh, go through the enlightenment process that, are, uh, that other religions have gone through yeah. by questioning the inhuman 
uh, unscientific and unequal and uh, aspe aspects of religion. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we uh, get criticized, we get hacked to death, we get you know banned and uh, blacklisted. Everything if we criticize Islam, but is, if Islam is not criticized, if you, you know the the. the the Muslim people in their countries, or you know, would not understand that other would not know about other opinions. No, and and the the Muslim society will not be enlightened, will not be secular. So, to 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 uh, you know, separate religion and state, and to secularize society, to secularize people, you need need to you know criticize the religion mm -hmm. and all the anti-women tradition and culture otherwise it will be status quo mm -hmm. i understand i mean you have the perfect right for that um, um it um uh, i understand your point of view of course about things won't change if i don't write it out if i don't criticize but on a personal level if you look at back at your uh, biography and you think Maybe I shouldn't have written that book or that moment, or I could have lived there. Or, or I'm just curious about whether there is, on a personal level, regret that maybe I should have shut up or I should have not published this. Or no, no. never. No. Sometimes. Uh... <laughs> you know, I write uh, whatever I like, but. Yeah. I, you know, in Bangladesh, the newspaper which published my Columns, articles, they yeah. always censor. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to censor myself. I think that self-censorship is the worst form of censorship. Why is so that? Why is that? Uh, because, <laughs> uh, you know, because, because, you know, <laughs> What should I say? Mm -hmm. That it is. It is worst form of censorship. I, if I censor myself, it means that I am against freedom of expression. If someone censor, okay, they can do that, but they shouldn't do. But I should not censor myself. I think it's the worst form of censorship. But 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 okay. But I understand in many ways, maybe. But why is that? Why do you have to? Why do you, because of why the are government. you so harsh for yourself? Because it's no, dangerous. I shouldn't. Yeah. I, d I don't. I don't. Many people do. Mm -hmm. Many people, even though they, are, they, are, they, are, they like to criticize Islam, they mm -hmm. don't do. Because then they will be hacked yeah, to death, exactly. they will They're have problems, they, they, they're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. But some people are not afraid, even though they know that prison is waiting for them, or they will be hacked. By but why do you have to be on that side of the on that side of the few people who are who tell themselves that they need to be totally honest and not self-censored i mean it's brave i praise you for it but why because they really t want to tell the truth mm -hmm. it's you very really important want to tell the truth? i want to tell the truth and why is that important it is important so that that uh, the people can uh, be um People can be, you know, can know the, the about the truth, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, you have to suffer for that. That other people can know the truth. Yeah, I have. If I mean, they are uh, stupid, they're, and they, but they can read. Yeah, can they? they're stupid. Uh, some pe many people told me so, that I'm stupid. So why, so I why, think that why, few why people, you only the f people? yeah, that only few people can change the world. Actually, the history said that only f mm -hmm. few people mm -hmm. change this world. Yeah, they, Whatever they, happened, you know, that uh, there's all these misogynistic traditions are now, now, now gone. Mm -hmm. Who, who, only a few people try to do that. Mm -hmm. That uh, secular, the Western countries, you know, secularized the society or secularized the state. Not majority people actually uh, demanded for it, no. or majority no. people didn't didn't ask for it. It was the only few people. But why few do you people have to, sh to, 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 to shoulder the burden. Yeah, I like to do it. I think that it is important. I think that uh, it is important. Also, I have seen that many people realize that that this Islamic society should be. Uh, reformed or changed, or mm -hmm. there should be revolution in mm -hmm. Islamic society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also women have been suffering. Not many women are talking about this. They also, you know, women are 
treated as childbearing machines or, or slaves of men or, sure. or sexual objects. Mm -hmm. And it's going on. And men and women who believe in patriarchy accept these uh, notions. And yes. then that, but there should be some women, there should be people, you know, who said, no, we shouldn't accept this patriarchal system or this misogynistic system. But you know, women also do not, do not fight against it because then if they fight, they see what happened to me. Mm -hmm. They have to, you know, they have to be, they will be hated by uh, men and women both, and they will be killed or they will be tortured or they will be in prison or they will be thrown out of their country. So nobody, no, no men or no women want to suffer. No. But some people maybe don't mind to suffer, and I'm proud to be one of them. Okay. <laughs> Would that, that, that notion that you're proud to be one of them, do you remember when you first realized that you were willing and courageous enough to be one? You know, it's just not, I didn't decide that, okay, I want to be like this. No, no. I just wanted, okay, I am, f I, am, I, I am writing against inequalities and mm -hmm. injustices, yeah. but other injustices, other, f you know, fight against injustices are acceptable. But whenever I fight for women, then somehow this patriarchal society doesn't accept. Yeah. And then they started you know, humiliating me and character assassination. Everything started. Yes. But I asked myself, did I do anything wrong? No, I didn't do anything wrong. There are injustices against women. Why shouldn't I say no? So I said no. I found, you know, I realized that it was, you know, the truth that I'm saying and also that all the, you know, I became, actually, I was never a religious person. And uh, when I was very young, I read the Quran and I found that injustices and inequalities in the Quran. And I thought that I should say it because it is written in Arabic and nobody knows the, uh, what is written there. Because and you the were people, able to read it. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I read that Bengali translation. Bengali translation, yeah. Because Quran should not be uh, read in other languages; it should be read in Arabic. In original so language. So yeah. most of the most of the people in uh, in uh, in Muslim people are not Arabic, so they do not know what is written in the Quran. They just believe whoever, whatever you know, Mullah says that is written in the Quran and Hadith. They just believe. So anyway, so I thought that uh, in the beginning when I was very young, that uh, Quran is maybe, is, uh, uh, you know, is good about women. But when I found, I was really shocked. And then I started writing about it. Um, you know, I said, my mother, my mother was a religious person, but my father was not. Your father was a doctor, huh? And my father doctor, is a yeah. doctor, and uh, doctor. he was an atheist, I think. He never said that he was an atheist, but he never prayed, uh, you know. Whenever my father, my mother forced me to pray, you know, my father said, no, come and go to study, you know, like this. And uh, I was eight years old. I tell you the funny, uh, it's an interesting please. story. Yeah, please. Mm, um, my mother uh, became religious, and she was not religious uh, in the beginning, and she Originally, became religious yeah. because she was influenced by some women who told her to be religious because she was not happy uh, at in home life. in at life. Home. Yeah. So yeah. some people advise her if she will be happy and she will have to forget every. And uh, everything, and she has to dedicate herself to the to Islam, mm -hmm. and then she will be happy. Then actually she tried, but anyway she forced me to pray and to read the Quran. So I, when I was reading the Quran, I didn't understand anything. So I asked my mother, "What is the meaning of the verses that I read?" And she said, you don't need to know the meaning of the verses. You just read in Arabic. Then Allah will be happy. And um, I asked my mother that you said that uh, Allah knows everything. 
So Allah doesn't know Bengali. If I re- <laughs> pray, if I pray, if I pray in uh, Bengali, I wanted to pray in Bengali. So she said no. Then I asked her that you said Allah knows everything. Doesn't Allah know Bengali? But anyway, she said that if any, if you say anything bad about Allah, your tongue will fall off. Yeah. So I never knew, I didn't know that somebody's tongue could fall off, you know. So mm. I was very curious. What's new for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to, bath- to the bathroom and I, I locked the bathroom door and I said, Allah is a son of a bitch. <laughs> Allah is a son of a dog. All the, all the slangs that we use in Bengali language. And I, I was, I waited and I waited, and I thought that my tongue would fall off. And it was one minute past five minutes and ten minutes. My tongue didn't fall off. So that I tried. And then I... You were eight years old? Huh? You were eight. I was yeah. eight years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was a student of science, so I knew about uh, all this, uh, you know, gravitation and all these the the solar system and everything but the quran says that sun is moving uh, re- around the earth and all this all this all this lies you know so how could a, a, a student of science can believe in uh, the quran it's uh, totally anti science and also anti human anti human rights anti humanism and but still people are believing uh, using everything of science, but believing this anti-science book. So it is not a holy book, of course. It is not. Uh, it is written by a, ma- a man of he, for his interest. But I wonder that so many people, the rational people, are there, so they know what to do. You know, in what situation. But they believe in those. Uh, in this. In this. Tr- those books as holy, so it's and they're killing people for it. You know, in Dhaka Cafe, that so many young people, they're rich, they're educated. They, you know, if you believe, if you think that the terrorists, Islamic terrorists, come from the poor, poor families, no. Now things have changed. You know, they uh, they come from the very rich family, educated family. They go to uh, universities and they study, they study all these, you know, science, and mm-hmm. they become Islamic terrorists. They become, they are doctors. You know, the Al Qaeda, this uh, Osama bin Laden, he was an uh, engineer, but they became Islamic terrorists. You know. So it's this, not the poor. It's the, it's no, it's no. The they they believe well. that no. in Dhaka Cafe where they slaughtered so many foreigners, so many people, and they are. They were, they were so happy that they will be killed, the poli- because police would come and they will, police will kill them. They know it. They say, okay, we will meet uh, in uh, in the afterlife. They really believe there is an afterlife, and they really believe what Islam says that they will, uh, they will have sex with so many virgins, and they really believe it. And it's a brainwashed people, but how long those young people will be how continue you, to be brainwashed? If you describe this to us, um, it's rich people, it's educated people, it's uh, people who really believe that they'll be uh, given uh, 72, virgins. 72 virgins in the afterlife. How do you look upon the, the future, up, 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 upon the next decade? or the, Is it going to get worse? Aren't you I, more, uh, more afraid, or are you thinking that there is... I Life. have no idea, but I can tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. In the 60s, I haven't seen uh, young people go to mosques. In our area where I lived, where I was uh, you raised, know, raised yeah. in in big area, there is one mosque. Only my grandma, grandfather used to go uh, to meet other, other old friends of him. You know, only the old people used to go. Now, in that area, there are hundreds of mosques, and young people go there, and the roads are blocked when they pray mm-hmm. uh, in those mosques. 
And uh, I haven't seen any of my school friends or college friends or medical college friends uh, that are wearing hijab. No. Now, I think 70% women are wearing hijab. In the neighborhood so, where you were raised? In, in, yeah, in, no, well. in whole country. Oh. So <coughs> on, my, my classmates, not only my classmates, in whole country, those people are wearing hijab and mus uh, the so, men are so wearing... So it's not getting any better? No, not getting better. It's no. worse. Mm -hmm. Because Islamization started in 80s and I think that it is the situation of uh, all the Muslim countries. And you know that we know about the secular movement in, 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 in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Iraq. You know, they're a strong movement. Now all are, you know, wiped her. Mm -hmm. mm. You, you spoke about your mother, um, you said one sentence about your father. You think your father would be proud of you, that you are yeah. one of the people who Yeah, and who my father was out. an atheist, actually. You think he would be proud that you are um, as brave as you are? Yeah, when I was in hiding, you know, in two months in Bangladesh in 1994, mm -hmm. my father came to meet me secretly yeah. because I wanted, I thought that I would be get, I would be killed so I could see my father. So it was not, it was not, it was not easy, it was difficult. Maybe he had to come, you know, some other pe he had to brought the people at two o'clock in the morning. So he told me that if you have to be, you know, because it was like this that I will be executed by hanging. He told me that don't be afraid. You are fighting for a good cause. He said that to you? Yeah, he said to me. I was surprised that he said that. My mother is crying for me at home, but he said that be brave. If you have to be uh, killed, so, but be brave. It's okay. That's some statement. <laughs> Thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and, and half an hour we have a conversation uh, with Ina Sevchenko uh, here in this room again. Thank you very, very much thank for you. being here and for doing what you do. <coughs>